Welcome everyone, Denzel Rodriguez here, personal finance geek of the 21st century on this channel. We cover Velocity Banking, Infinite Banking, and Kingdom Authority. Today we're gonna cover a little bit of Velocity, a little bit of uh, Kingdom Authority, and just sharing our businesses, what's been going on, some updates, uh, things that we're working on, projects, things like that. So I have none other than my good longtime friend and business partner for the last five years since 2018 it's now mm -hmm. may of 2023 and i believe we we first transacted business we will probably uh, uh fact check this but i want to say um we engaged in business probably a little after may i think it was probably like of may 2018 yeah i think it was like maybe like august ish late summer late summer yeah that late sounds summer. about right so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll fact check it for you guys <laughs> But uh, happy to be here with you all, got Alex here in the house in person. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some really cool things to reveal. I want to give you the floor. Uh, just reintroduce yourself to my audience. Many of whom, many of them know you already, but some don't. So give us a little overview. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, my name is Alex Alibran. I own a marketing and consulting company. Uh, mainly specializing in e-commerce. And so e-commerce is a big buzzword, right? You hear it on YouTube, Facebook ads, everywhere, e-com, e-commerce, drop shipping, but e-commerce is selling online. It's buying products online, Amazon. If you buy a product on Amazon, you're engaging in e-commerce. And so I help people launch e-commerce businesses, grow e-commerce businesses. Um, but I also have clients like Denzel. I help them build YouTube channels, marketing businesses, coaching businesses. Um, so I've had this business for, I would say about maybe six years. So you were one of my first, I would say big clients who, you know, I helped him go from zero to where he's at now. But I think the biggest thing with Denzel is that from day one, you never talked about making money. That was never your goal. Like I'm visualizing that first meeting that Denzel and I had, and he was focused on how can I help as many people as possible? Because he helped his mom, that was your first client. Right. Um, but the focus was how can I help as many people as possible? The passion that Denzel had about Velocity Banking was phenomenal. It was tremendous. And that's why he's been so successful because he's helped a lot of people. And so that's where um, I wanted to shoot some new content with him because I want to help people, you know, for free on YouTube just by providing value in terms of business, entrepreneurship, e-commerce, how to make money online, sharing more about our journey because we don't come from family owned businesses. We both bootstrapped our businesses to seven figures. And so um, I'm glad to be back on the channel. It's Absolutely. been, I think, maybe pre-COVID was our last time was shooting content like this. In person, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah. pre-COVID, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really cool to just provide you guys an update. Here's what's been going on. We'll, we'll share some general, uh, uh, pretty accurate numbers and reveal some cool things we have some we have a little unboxing thing we mm -hmm. want to do in a minute we'll definitely dive into that mm -hmm. uh, but everything alex says is really spot on in terms of what my initial intention was it was all about how can i help as many people as possible how can i give and create a lifestyle that matches my my purpose right so creating the the team putting the resources in place setting up the systems and automations as you know, on this channel, I usually always cover the numbers and I'm always about what are we keeping? What are we stewarding? What are we managing? Um, so very little do I touch on how to actually produce more, how to multiply more wealth, more money, more income. This is something I have experience in, but not necessarily the best person uh, teaching legitimate strategies on how to multiply, how to create more money. And so Alex was that person for me that helped me go from literally zero. I was I was in debt, so technically negative, no job, zero dollars, very low capital to now have generated safely. I can say two million has been the total amount of net revenue has been over two mil over the last five years. So starting January of 2019, if you count from that point mm -hmm. till May of 2023, total revenue from all different income streams, investments, revenues, YouTube, everything all together has been over two mil. And he's been the behind the scenes person 
not necessarily did I make money directly from him, right? But we have made money together, uh, but it's the systems that he helped me put in place for each one of those income streams that I've been able to generate, especially YouTube, the uh, the funnels, the website, the landing pages, the, the marketing, the sales, the follow-up, like all of that, I credit Alex on that. So with that being said, passing it over to you now, um, anything you want to add to that? And then we'll dive mm -hmm. right into uh, this unboxing, explain what, what this is and what mm -hmm. it means for you. Definitely. So I would like to add these people hear that number. They hear $2 million. Like that is, first of all, unbelievable, mm -hmm. amazing. Especially like you're saying, you started not at zero, negative. negative. <laughs> or it's just negative X amount to now over $2 million. But if you look at where that income came from, the majority of that probably came in the last 30 months, 36 months. I mean, ever since really COVID. Yeah, since COVID. COVID was my biggest revenue year. I did I did 464,000 mm -hmm. in, in, in 2020. And then the following year was actually way less, mm -hmm. 332. Uh, and then last year bumped it up to just around 380, 370. I have to validate what that number was. I just filed, mm -hmm. I have to look at it. Um, and then my first year in business was 283, 283K, mm -hmm. something like that. So if yeah. you add up all those numbers, I think you should get two mil. And then you also have to add the investments that I made that I didn't right. count in those numbers. So mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so when I add it all together, that's two mil, but that's a five year period. You know, right? It's like it's not like I made two mil overnight. It's not like I made, I mean, and not to say that people don't do that because mm -hmm. that's definitely very possible. You're exactly, you're, you're an example of that. And mm -hmm. I'm sure you have other clients that have done it. Nonetheless, it's an extremely large number for me coming from an environment where my household, two incomes, uh, never exceeding over a hundred thousand a year. Like I've never been in a household where the total gross income, gross, not even net, right? The 2 million I share with you, that's net revenue, mm -hmm. right? Generated, uh, uh, plus business. So for the last, from, from birth all the way to age 20, 22. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 22 years, never been in a household that generated over 100K. Probably nowhere near, uh, probably 80, 90 was like the highest at right. one point, and probably only for like a year, two years. You know? <laughs> that was a blip, was a blip on the radar, yeah. So you had no exposure to that level of money. Correct. No. Which shows that anybody can do it. Exactly. That yeah. is true. That is true. It, mm -hmm. it does take this this burning desire. You have to have a fire inside of you. You have mm -hmm. to have a passion. You've got to have discipline. There's a lot of these other um, immeasurable elements, whether you want to look at it spiritually or just logically, things you can't touch. Mm -hmm. Intangibles. Intangibles that yeah. you need to, it just it has to have a, a fire burning inside of you. And some people's fires are much hotter than others. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I consider the fire inside of me to be real, real hot, but I've met other people based on the traumas, right? The obstacles, mm -hmm. the, the challenges that they had. I'm like, yeah, your fire is burning like <laughs> way hotter than mine. Mm -hmm. I, I need to, you know, match that and, and figure out those keys mm -hmm. to get to that point. So. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing with the intangibles is the patience or everybody wants something now. They want it now. They want to lose weight right now. They want to get the car right now. They want to buy the house right now. But again, people look at maybe Denzel and I, and they see we just got over the mountaintop after five years, six years in this. Mm -hmm. People see that and they're like, oh, I want that in five months or six months. <laughs> and we're laughing at it because it's like we, we know the pain that we had to go through, the ups and downs. Look, 2020, you had an amazing revenue year. And you're like, oh, this is going to go on forever. It's only going to go up from here. And the next year, revenue drops, that's about 25%. Yeah. And you're like, oh, is it going to drop 25% next year as well? uncertainty, pain, self-doubt. But I think the biggest ingredient mix is persistence. If you keep trying and you don't quit, something's gonna happen, right? But if you quit, you'll never know. So I think that's the biggest thing, but also persistence over a long period of time. And I'm not acting like this is my quote, but people underestimate what they can do in 10 years or even 20, and they overestimate what they can do in 12 months. Anybody that started a business or wants to start one, is probably overestimating, oh, I'm gonna start this business, go from zero to a million dollars in the next 12 to 15 months. 
And of course it's doable. It's highly possible, but give yourself time. You got to work out the kinks. You have to figure things out over a marathon, not a sprint. I think that's the biggest mix persistence with time, with patience. Something's going to happen. Something's going to work out. You just have to give yourself time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's, let's show them what persistence looks like. <laughs> <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> yeah. So some of you may be in the online marketing space or you may have seen, I'm going to pull something out, unbox it, the click funnels to comma club award. And what that is, is a click funnels, the click funnels award is basically with click funnels. They're the biggest sales funnel software on the internet. So anybody that's selling coaching or marketing or even selling products, e-commerce, they most likely have used or are using click funnels. And the two comma club award is something that you have to verify. I've made a million dollars over a 12 month period with one sales funnel. You have to send them a detailed video with your revenue and proof of exactly how you did it. And that's what makes this, I would say a pretty valuable credibility tool in the online marketing space because you're thinking, okay, well, who should I really trust in this online marketing, online business space? Is this some guy in his you know, mom's basement or is this guy a real entrepreneur? There's only, I think, 750 of these out there um, because it's with one funnel, $1 million in one year. So a lot of things have to happen to get to that point. And so I just want to share it, have an unboxing. No shots fired to the person that's in their mom's basement that's trying to build because we all have to start somewhere. Okay. We important. both started there. And we both started there. <laughs> Literally. That's why. Not figuratively. Um, I'm glad they got my name spelled correctly. That was a 50 50 toss up. Um, but yeah, this is something where, again, not a bragging thing whatsoever. It's more saying if I can do it, Denzel did it. Anybody watching this can do it. But again, you have to understand the mix that it takes. It's like, you can't say, I want a pizza, but then you have greens and steak and other ingredients. It's like, if you want this, you have to have the persistence, the patience and the risk taking to overcome. Really, I think the biggest thing is fear of failure. Um, that's what stops most people from pursuing their dreams entrepreneurially. They have an idea, they execute on it a little bit, but then they're fear they, they're scared of the uncertainty, right? They don't know what's out there. And that's the whole point. You have to understand self doubt is never going away. I, I do with self doubt every day. I'm sure Denzel does. We all do. Um, but you have to understand that's happening no matter what, no matter if you're making a million dollars or a hundred million, everybody has self doubt, but you can overcome that. But fear of failure, that's what stops maybe you or your mom or your friend from pursuing that business. And 30 years from now, they think, what if I started that business? You know, what if I took the risk? What if, what if that is a dangerous thing to have in your life? What if, what if I got in shape? What if I asked her out? What if I asked him out? What if I went to church more? Um, so that's where this ties into all aspects of life. It's just, if you want something, you have to go after it, get over the fear of failure. If you fail, you learn. Right. But if you the real failure is not trying, if you don't even try yeah. to I'm trying over a long period of time, anybody could try to be in a business owner for a weekend and they do some research, they launch a Shopify store and then nothing happens of it. But if you try for a year, three years, five years, something's going to happen, either a success or a lesson. So I think that's the biggest takeaway. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I huge testament again for those that, okay, I want to impact. I want to solve a problem. I want to present a product in the marketplace. Everything that Alex is saying we, we need to have. And also that nice dose of humility, knowing that, hey, the, the chances of this exploding really fast is, is absolutely there. Mm -hmm. When it doesn't happen is the real test. When you don't succeed is, is the real test within the, the time frame that you set for yourself. And that whole point of not giving up is intense. Mm -hmm. uh, the self-doubt is very real. I remember in the, when COVID hit and I made all that money, self-doubt definitely creeped in because mm -hmm. I nearly doubled my income doing the same things I was doing the year prior. Mm -hmm. I was just doing more of it 
And it just so happened that a lot of people were searching for what I was talking about, right? And then 2021 hits, and specifically around velocity banking, the concept itself, we started noticing uh, banks were like trying to tighten up a little bit. So that kind of prevented quite a few people from getting approved for their home equity line of credits or uh, personal line of credit, credit cards, people's credit scores weren't, you know, the best. And then dealing with personal issues, you know, as an entrepreneur, when you decide to start a business, you still have a life, you got to mm -hmm. live, you still have to deal with negative people in your household, because those are those are probably the biggest haters you'll ever receive the biggest negative people mm -hmm. you'll you'll ever have to interact with is the people that actually know you, right? People that know you or your your own blood. Mm -hmm. Haters in the comments is peanuts mm -hmm. compared to the person you have to live with the person you grew up with the, the the friend that is a big influence in your life but they're not necessarily influencing you in the direction that you're trying to take your business in mm -hmm. that's a whole nother element there that we could definitely you know spend some time on but all in all really really happy we're we're doing this was just it's just a conversation some mm -hmm. people need this where it's a dose of here here's what our where our minds are at our thoughts here's what's going on uh you just had a that's a major milestone mm -hmm. right there what what else happens uh now that you have that is there is there another goal to hit like what's the next step with this mm -hmm. and and click funnels and what they're doing yeah that's kind of the tricky thing is that when I first started this business, I'm like, if I have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, I'm set for life, right? <laughs> Which seems like, oh, if I hit that, I'm done. I don't need more. Once you hit that, you're like, oh, that wasn't as hard as I thought. Now let me aim for five hundred thousand, then a million, and so that's where it's a tricky balance between wanting more, 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 versus at a certain point saying, okay, what's a balance between not being content? but then still not pursuing more for the sake of, let's say, personal and work balance. Right? Because technically I could say, oh, three commas are next, or whatever, $10 million is next, but if I really wanna hit that, maybe I have to sacrifice my relationship or family time or my health. That's where I'm at right now, where it's not just about maximizing revenue, I wanna maximize work-life balance. Um, so again, it's not really a financial number, or it's not related to that. Um, it's a great milestone, but I think it's more so if you keep pushing, 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 there may be regrets later on where again, maybe not what if I grew my business, what if I just slowed down on my business, I relaxed a little bit, savored the moment, and took that vacation. Because you can always make more money, mm. but you can't get your time back. Very true. Right? We're only getting older. If I'm, let's say, 25 right now, my girlfriend's gonna be 23, that's only gonna happen once yeah. in our life. Mm -hmm. But money, I can always make more money. So that's where I'm at right now, where I wanna make more money for not just myself and my clients, but at the same time, have that work-life balance and find the sweet spot. Um, that's been the biggest, I would say, challenge. thing on my mind, the yeah. biggest challenge. Yeah, that's yeah. that's interesting you say that. So you're 25, I'm 27, and there is no blueprint, by the way. There's no manual on work-life balance. Some people don't believe in work-life balance. Mm -hmm. Some people try to strive for it, work-life balance. Uh, for for me, I and this is something I'm actually working through as well, exactly what Alex is talking about, is you, you hit certain goals in your life faster than you mm -hmm. would think. And then now you're like questioning, all right, like you said, do I go for the three commas, four commas? Am I doing it just for the status, just for the rep, just for the, the number? Or do, do I need to generate that kind of money because I genuinely want to help this amount of people? Right. So it requires that amount of wealth mm -hmm. to uh, help that many people that you want to serve. Mm -hmm. I know for me, this is where logic kind of goes out the door. Now, now it's more emotional. It's more purpose driven. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who have faith, those of you that of that are of the faith, you know, you believe in a God, you believe in the Father, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. There's there's scriptures that will back you up in terms of being content, right, with what you have. Simultaneously, mm -hmm. there's these scriptures that talk about really operating in your gifts that you've been given here on planet Earth. So if you've been given a gift by this almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing God, and he puts that inside of you, there's no telling what potential that 
gift could produce in terms of numbers, in terms of revenues and, and, and wealth in that mm -hmm. sense. So there is that interesting battle that you're gonna have to fight. And if you find people like Alex, like myself, that are also in that fight, you surround yourself with positive people, I believe they're really gonna help you make that best decision for yourself where you might have to say, you know what, over the next 12 months, I'm dedicating majority of my time towards my health. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I've reached a point in my life, my finances, I recently got engaged, mm -hmm. right? Now I got a fiance, now I'm thinking wedding, now I'm planning, <laughs> now I'm thinking, wait, should I buy a house? Right. Or go the go go the multifamily route and, and rent where I stay, but invest and, and own multiple doors. And so a lot of different ways that we can go. It gets really, really tough because you know, those of you who are watching that are business owners, you're entrepreneurial, you you just have something that most people don't have or don't care to seek for. So most people don't understand you. And their advice will be irrelevant terrible. to your situation. It'll be terrible. Mm -hmm. People will be like, oh, we'll take a break. Da, 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 da. But it's the way they say it mm -hmm. versus how we can have a, a genuine conversation where we're like, okay, Alice is in a, in a relationship now it's serious i am in a relationship seven year relationship this is serious this is going the distance you know i'm engaged now i'm thinking okay uh is there an element where i need to spend more time with my fiance right now in the planning and as a result of that it'll it'll hurt my money mm -hmm. am i okay with that right you gotta really you have to really like sit with yeah, that it's subjective subjective right yeah or is it gonna make you less happy when you're not working. I'm the type of person that when I'm not working, I feel less engaged in other things. I, I have to work mm -hmm. because I view the, the, the word work very differently than how most people view it. You know, work means to become who you are. That's the original meaning of the word, right? To work means to become who you are. So every time that I'm working, having calls with my clients, those of you who are watching, I'm able to hear God's voice more I'm able to tune into what he wants from me more and I'm able to submit to that even more when I'm when I'm in the work. So now the key is to figure out, well, how do I get that with my fiance when we're hanging out doing nothing, mm -hmm. when we're in rest? Because scripture also talks on resting, the power of resting mm -hmm. in the finished works of Jesus Christ, of, of our Father. So it's like, what the heck? You Sometimes you think the Bible's like contradicting it. So it's like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be operating my gifts over here, you know, like right. 100, 100, and over here, I'm supposed to be content. And then rest. And, and then I'm supposed to rest. <laughs> what the heck? Exactly. You know, so that, it that, just depends on the phase of your life that you're in, I guess. It, exactly. And, and yeah. really being very, very humble and honest with yourself. And again, surrounding yourself with people that are willing to hear you out mm -hmm. like the full of you like the first 15 things you say might sound crazy but then the 16th thing that you say might have some oh we might want to write that down mm -hmm. oh so this is how you feel when this happens oh so when you're when you're resting you're not really resting that's your problem mm -hmm. is you're thinking about the business this is something i gotta face like sometimes when i mm -hmm. genuinely want to rest i can't yeah then there's times where I'm working, but then other things get neglected. Mm -hmm. So who am I working for? Am I working for me or am I working for God? It's a simple question. In that moment, we sometimes have to re-ask yourself that, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm working right now, but am I working for me or am I working for God? You know. And so sometimes that might be a, a moment. And then when you're tired, you say, wait a minute, am I resting for me or am I resting with God? for God. Mm -hmm. you know, so these are just like battle grounds. These are, these are wars going on in mm -hmm. the mind, you know, between uh, our two ears and who you allow around you will either benefit or greatly suffer, mm -hmm. you know, in the long run. I hear this all the time. People that are wanting to start their business or grow their business, they're like, oh, I want to talk to my buddy about this. Or let me ask my college roommate if I should do the program. And it's like, okay, well, tell me about your college roommate. It's like, oh, they, they're a waiter. And I'm, nothing wrong with being a waiter, but you're asking for business advice to somebody that isn't where you wanna be. So that's where if you wanna get somewhere, whether it's a million dollars, $10 million, whatever it is, you have to think, okay, if I'm thinking of doing something or I'm asking advice about this thing, I need to ask people that are doing it or have already done it, right? It's like asking somebody that's not in shape, hey, I need you to make my diet plan. Give me a workout routine. 
which seems like a simple, yeah, I want my personal trainer to be ripped, but do, I, do you want your marketing consultant to be broke? Or do you want your financial coach to be broke? It's like, listen to who you're talking, not even listen, think about who you're asking advice to, what are their credentials, what's their credibility, and what you're asking advice for. Um, it's like you're saying, people around you, they think they have your best interest at heart. A lot of the time, they have their own fears. Right. their own regrets and that they're kind of pawning off on you. Maybe they didn't start the business that they should have. Maybe they didn't take the risk and now they're scared of you doing the same thing that they weren't, I would say, proud enough to do themselves, take the risk and then um, they negatively affect the decision making. So it's right. kind of what you're saying, who you surround yourself with, who do you ask advice of? Um, that may make or break you. Absolutely. Like Also, beyond credibility, status, results of the person you seek advice from i would also put a little uh, a, a spiritual covering over that i would i would pray before asking that person for advice on a particular matter but also try to maybe ask some pre-qualifying questions mm -hmm. because last thing you want to do is share big vision big thinking with small thinkers mm -hmm. that's the last thing you want to do is share something big with a small thinker share a big goal a big dream a big vision with a small dreamer mm -hmm. someone that doesn't dream and you may have a great relationship with them on these three areas mm -hmm. but when it comes to business you don't want to protect that you know it's almost like your intellectual property right there uh your your, your spiritual gifts you're gonna want to protect that you don't want to just cast it out there to to swan to anybody to, to swine i mean and just like you know hope for the best but then also those pre-qualifying questions will also reveal the intent mm. of of the person i think that's that has helped me there's been times where I wanted to share certain things with close family, close friends, right? That they, they're they not ready mm -hmm. for what I have. Exactly. Shoot, I wasn't even ready mm -hmm. for what God put in my heart, but I knew he put it there. So now I have to express it, but I got to find big thinkers. I have to find people that think bigger than me. Mm -hmm. You're one of those people, you know, and I have others in my space. I have clients that think bigger than me sometimes. I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. like it's the, exciting. It's it motivating. is. I'm like, the way they pray for me, I just had a couple uh, that I was working with, negative cash flow, like almost 3,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. And we mapped out a whole plan to within just a couple months will we'll be positive cash flow. They do everything that I say. They'll be positive cash flow and then some. And once the call was over, they took about two, three minutes praying but like big prayer, you know, they were saying like big things that just really give you goosebumps when you're just sitting there on the other line and you're just like, you know, eyes closed and these people are just going mm -hmm. hard, you know, in their prayer. They're like convinced that what they said is for me. And then I, at the end, I was like, hey amen, I receive it. So, <laughs> so now what comes after, whoa, you know, can be, can be huge in so many different ways, mm -hmm. right? In that small thinking mindset, I consider it poison. Yeah. Because as an entrepreneur, your thoughts and how you turn dreams into reality, that's your most valuable asset. Besides, I would say time. But if you let poison, if you let small thoughts or, oh, what if this happens? Or you don't know if you're going to be successful. And all those little, seemingly little thoughts, that can be poison. One little seed of poison can kill an entrepreneur. Because again, it's not, there's no playbook. There's no, oh, if you do X, Y, and Z, you're going to be successful. There's, it's things happen. I mean, how you and I met, there's no playbook for that. No. Right. If you want to share that, I mean, just to show that there is a level of chance, I would say blessings, luck, whatever you want to call it. But there is the matter of if you're persistent, if you do your best, you seemingly are lucky. I think Patrick Bed David is saying, oh yeah, I'm lucky. I'm the luckiest person you'll ever meet because lucky people, they also do the work to get in front of the right people who make them quote unquote lucky. Right. Um, so there is some control that you have over that, but there is some things just like how we met that um, are once in a lifetime, I'd say. Yeah, I'll give an example. Mm -hmm. There's something that I consistently do whenever, and it, it comes from the heart, it's genuine, but it's also work. There's a strategy to it. So it's a combination of genuine care and intent, passion, drive to put myself in the right rooms. I've always said that I don't have to be the person making the most money in the room. Mm -hmm. I just want to be in the room. I could be a fly on the wall. As long as I'm in that room, whatever that room is, mm -hmm. it could be a room full of billionaires, a room full of multimillionaires, a room full of politicians, a room full of heads of states, 
a room full of elders, pastors of, of mega churches, like just being in those rooms that are so exclusive、mm-hmm. that you get firsthand knowledge, firsthand information, firsthand insight on a thing. So, this thing that I do whenever I either meet someone new that just wows me、mm-hmm. in terms of the value that they gave me, the opportunity that they give me,、uh, it's a sign of just gratitude. Honor, there's kingdom in it, there's a lot of meaning in it where I will give people an ounce of silver. I did、mm-hmm. it just recently with my buddy here,、yeah. and and others that I have genuine relationships with, I will just give them a gift either randomly on a birthday or after an event or a, a dinner,、um, whatever it may be. Just give them an ounce of silver, say thank you, like this. Silver, this this money right here, because they understand this is a currency that doesn't devalue.、Mm-hmm. Silver, gold never devalues. The price may go up and down, but the value never drops. There's a difference between price and value,、mm-hmm. right? So it's like this there's like a sub uh, uh, meaning in it, there's、mm-hmm. multiple meanings. And it's just cool. No one does that. Nobody、right. gives silver randomly.、Mm-hmm. I don't know what kind of luck that can bring. What I do know is every time I give silver to someone I care about, that I want to have a genuine, long lasting relationship, the value of that silver represents the relationship increasing in value over time because silver, gold will、mm-hmm. increase over time.、Yeah. The, the, wherever they put it, that ounce of silver, whether it goes in an in in important draw somewhere or it's on their dresser or it's somewhere in sight, I'm being thought of. They watch a video of mine or they know of certain projects that I'm working on, and then they know someone in a particular room that could make whatever I'm trying to do happen.、Mm-hmm. I don't know. So there's that, there's that luck. It's there, it's floating. Right. I can't grab it, but I know it's there.、Mm-hmm. But then there's the strategy. There's the work. Yep, how, did just, how did I just accumulate all this silver? How am I able to just give people an ounce of silver?、Mm-hmm. Well, I bought a bunch of silver in advance because I, I intended to do a particular thing. I was like, I'm actually not buying this for me.、Mm-hmm. I'm not buying this gold and silver for me. I intend to give it away. So it was the intention of giving,、mm-hmm. honoring people's value, their worth in a gift. Representing what that looks like. So, think of ways that you can do things in a very unique way. There's a, there's a book that I don't know the title to. I just heard Patrick Bed David talk、mm-hmm. about it. This particular owner that I believe owns multiple hotels, and he talks about just unimaginable hospitality.、Mm-hmm. I forget what the book is called or something. It just has to do with providing customer service. To a whole new level、mm-hmm. that just wows the heck out of people, where they they will not forget you. It's kind of like when you go to a restaurant and the food wasn't all that, but man,、mm-hmm. that waiter was incredible.、Yeah. You'll never forget it.、Mm-hmm. That's the type of impact I'm trying to provide for my clients. I know Alex does for his clients,、mm-hmm. which I think is a really cool segue here if you want to add anything else into there, into that piece right there. But I do want to segue into how. You are helping customers how you are qualifying people, what questions.、Mm-hmm. Because I think there is a group of clients that are watching this that absolutely love what you do、mm-hmm. and what you've done for them. And they have expectations that are so realistic、mm-hmm. that almost it's like they underestimate. Right. And then they get over delivery.、Mm-hmm. Then there's a small group of people, clients, I know who they are. I've had conversations with them that they just have more concern,、mm-hmm. more fear, more doubt, more worry,、mm-hmm. and an, an anxious urge, desire、mm-hmm. to make money. Yeah. Totally get it.、Mm-hmm. You know, in the, in the marketing and the sales that we do and the videos that we you know, discuss and talk about.、Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that in this conversation, it really allows this group. To become more like this group, the group that is setting lower expectations. They understand the long term value of an investment, what it looks like, the, the mindset I have to go into,、mm-hmm. and really help this group here. They're not necessarily, you guys are not necessarily bad, and、right? I'm not calling you bad or anything like that, but also being able to understand whether or not you're ready for a particular move,、mm-hmm. whether it's working with me or, or Alex. 
you are investing in yourself. It's gonna cost you to work with me or Alex. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost you something and you're gonna feel it to an extent. So you wanna be able to step into that mindset of, wait, why am I doing this? Am I doing it just for the money? Then I should know in advance and I try to tell my clients this. I'm like, look, if you're doing anything just for the sole purpose of money, mm. have contingencies in place. Yeah. I'm not even gonna say that it may not work. I'm not even gonna say that because there's definitely moves that I've made where it was just a pure money move mm -hmm. because it solves for a different purpose in my business plan where I'm like, I'm invested in this. It's a pure money move. I have no emotion, whether it succeeds or not. It, it's it's a money move because I know that's an asset. It'll increase in value. It's like gold. It's like buying gold and silver, or mm -hmm. buying a cryptocurrency, or buying a piece of real estate, or investing in a particular business model, mm -hmm. where it's like not emotionally tied to it. It's just one of those things. It it'll just increase in value over time. Mm -hmm. Buying and you know getting an investment account or an HSA or a life insurance policy no motion to it. it's just a money move but then there are other things where when we invest in people mm -hmm. there's emotion to it there is there's mm -hmm. some expectations and i don't know i want you to talk a little bit on on your experience dealing with mm -hmm. certain people what are some things you try to tell them or maybe you do tell them and then they're okay with it right and all of a sudden it, they watch a youtube video it's like 60 uh, days later 90 days later like hey how much money we're we making it's like <laughs> the store is not even up yet I don't even have products <laughs> secured. Like right, this is like we're baby step number one. Yeah. They want to be a baby step number five. I exactly. think that's the biggest thing. Where let's take two people as an example. One person talking about let's say buying a house. One person has a budget of five hundred thousand dollars. Person A. Person B has a budget of five hundred thousand dollars. Person A wants to go and buy a seven bedroom mansion on Miami Beach. They can't afford it. They're disappointed. They're like, oh, I, I want a beach house. I want a mansion. And it's like, well, you don't have the budget for that. And so their expectations were off making them unhappy. Whereas let's say person B has the same budget and they're like, I just want a little two, two, you know, in Naples and they could find that for 300,000. They're like, wow, I mean, I'm so happy. So that's where tying that to business. It's where you can have two people putting the same amount of money and having the same store on the same track one is completely satisfied and happy the other one like you're saying has some concerns and i think that has to do with urgency versus desperation those are two emotions that are very similar i would say they're cousins urgency is a healthy emotion we operate with urgency we want to make things happen let's move it let's see progress but we're looking for progress over a period of time desperation is more like you're saying oh i need to make money right now like, what's the store gonna make? I just launched it last week. Where's our first sale? Which we're laughing at it because we know business yeah. and we're it's apples and like I say, kale. It's two totally different mindsets. But again, those home buyers had the same budget, but they ended up with different emotions. So that's where if you're putting a certain amount in, you know, you have to give it time, you have to have correct expectations, which like you're saying, I do a good job of on the initial call when I when I talk to prospective clients. I like to see Again, are they urgent to get results? Are they patient? Or do they seem desperate to make money right now? So that's where if somebody seems desperate, I think, look, even if they have the money, we don't wanna work with them because from day one, they're gonna want that beach house for the price of a 2-2 in Naples. Yeah. And we, we can't deliver that. It's impossible. Right. At the same time, we work with clients who, they want a 3-2, you know, but they have a budget for a beach house. And so they're like, oh, this is amazing. Like you're saying, they're so satisfied. Um, so of course I want to do a better job of, that's why we're doing this as well to communicate that and saying, look, if you want certain results, it takes time. And of course it takes money. Um, but again, I think it's urgency versus desperation. That's what I look for in a prospective clients. And so I hope that gives some context in terms of again, expectations where again, you want the beach house, you got a condo budget, <laughs> you're gonna be unhappy, right? The expectation, there's a, a disconnect there. But again, if you want the three two and you have a budget for a mansion, you're gonna be like, oh wow, this is great. This is more than I expected. You under-promised, over-delivered, when the other client can think you over-promised, under-delivered for the same exact results that they both are getting. So that's the best analogy that I can give. I like that. Mm -hmm. Let's let's go a little deeper. Let's get into into some details mm -hmm. because those that are are watching this, we are simply really trying to weed out 
people who are truly not ready and I'm trying to do everything in my power to actually prevent people mm -hmm. from investing with Alex. Because I have an interest in the health of Alex, his lifestyle, mm -hmm. his relationship with his girlfriend, his, his business health, his just overall health. I have a genuine interest in that. The last thing I want is to be bringing clients of mine, showing them another opportunity, and then they're just looking at, oh, Denzel made two million with Alex, so I could probably make this kind of money. And there's that element of the the marketing, the sales that we do. That's it's it's part of our business cycle of any business process is mm -hmm. to have a sales and marketing process, just part of it. I think it's important for you as the customer, a potential client, to really evaluate where we're coming from, how we're presenting this, mm -hmm. in terms of how this could be another stream of income for you. So the, the million dollars you've been able to generate over the last 12 months, right, has come from mainly just this one business model of mm -hmm. building Amazon, Shopify, Walmart stores, right? Yes. Those, those three. Mm -hmm. Are there any other types of stores or are those the only um, I would say, I like to say this to clients, it's an e-commerce business that sells on Amazon, that sells on Walmart, that sells on Etsy. So it's not okay. really like, because people, again, they YouTube, Amazon, wow, look at this guy. He made 100,000 in his first 90 days with his Amazon store, and they think that's normal. When I think it's a matter of saying, hey, like results may vary, and that's not a typical success story with what you did. But I think people, they sign up for something, they see other people promoting, I would say, misleading things, and they're like, oh yeah, Alex seems like that, or even, Den I'm sure you have clients that are like, hey, help me with my negative cash flow in the next 30 days. And you're like, I can only do so much. Right. You know, like, I, we need time, we need more income. So I think that's a, a matter of fact where Amazon is an acquisition channel. Walmart is an acquisition channel, so it's not really an Amazon store. It's an e-commerce business that sells on Amazon, that sells on Walmart, that sells on Shopify. Um, kind of like advertising where you can have any business advertising on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Um, so it's really more advertising and acquisition platforms mm -hmm. um, to clarify because some clients do better on Amazon, some do better on Walmart. So I don't like to put it in a box and say, oh, this is an Amazon business or Walmart, it's really whatever platform can make the most money for that particular store, I would say. Okay, mm -hmm. so we've got an e-commerce business that is operating on these different platforms such as Etsy, Shopify, Walmart, Amazon. These are like the major players. Exactly. Let's break down the, the expectations, the elements mm -hmm. of not only working with you or working with anyone in the industry, yeah, uh, especially in this particular space, where it where it really is driven by the the hype. The, this is why there's so much hype around it is because mm -hmm. there are people out there creating content and they're just destroying it. They're mm -hmm. just doing great. Like I follow like one or two content creators. I mean, they're I'm like even I'm like how <laughs> how are you generating right millions of dollars per month? Mm -hmm. You're on jets. You got the Lambos mm -hmm. and you did it in less than six months and now you're helping hundreds of people do it. Right. How many of those hundreds are actually succeeding? Like, let's mm -hmm. get the real statistics and stats. So hopefully we can get something and some understanding here. Exactly. So that's where I kind of, I yield, I default because I do get some questions from clients where I'm like, they're a little bit down. Like, oh, you know, Alex is great. This is, is, is good. But you know, I was hoping cause I'm like, as soon as they start saying mm. hoping and I was expecting, expecting and I'm yeah. like, they must've been watching them videos I was watching <laughs> with, with the dude, the chick on the boat, the with yachts, the, Ferrari. the jets, the Ferraris. And right. Lambos. You're not going to see this guy make really any content around that mm -hmm. for that matter. So with, the initial investment mm -hmm. that my clients are making with you, especially the ones that have already invested, mm -hmm. right? Just to reiterate, because we're making fresh new content yep. to them and then also clients of mine, followers of mine that are considering your offer because they might have seen your emails or they clicked on one of my links that take mm -hmm. you to your stuff or they've seen previous content that we've done and you're kind of breaking down this type of a model. So if I'm not mistaken, it's 2023. The investment is like minimum, no matter what, it's like 15. Something. Minimum. Minimum yeah. to start, mm -hmm. right? Let's break down what are the, what are the major things that that covers mm -hmm. as someone dives into the e-commerce space and what are some initial goals that you have for the client 
Mm -hmm. and try to go try to talk about maybe some goals that are consistent that you'll hear from the client and how far you know or are we lined up kind Mm -hmm. of break that down a little bit yeah so i think the best place to start is with what this isn't this is not a coaching program or an online course because i don't really find that nowadays with business information knowledge is power i think it's execution right because if you look at youtube you could go on youtube for free and start an e-commerce business it's doable but it's the execution people have jobs they have families they go to church they're in their community they go to the gym, they have to clean the house. With all that, they have no time to again, really figure out on their own with a coaching program, with an online course, how to make this happen. Because I've been doing this for a while, a lot of clients, a lot of experience. And so it's a hands-on program where we're building with the client, the logo, you know, what we're gonna sell, what suppliers to get the products from, uh, what type of products we're going to sell, how to even get them onto Amazon, how to get them onto Walmart, building the store from scratch, everything A to Z, launching the store, marketing the store, getting some sales going. And that's where, to kind of pause there, people, they always like to ask, what can I make with this? Right. That's the that's the go-to question. Like, right. come on, Alex, what can I really expect to make with this? It's such a wide range when you're on YouTube. Like when you're looking at TikTok right. and Instagram, it's, I mean, some people the are, range is huge. Some say, here's I'm, how to make a thousand to five thousand a month. Right. Next guy is saying, here's how to make 50,000. Next person saying a hundred and this one saying a mil. Exactly. I'm like, and you're like, what's what a range? I don't love to use the word realistic. Yeah. I, I would say the goal is to make money, period. Period. Which seems again, like a simple statement, but everybody's different. Okay. Right? I have clients that have YouTube channels that have made a 10th of what you've made mm-hmm. or fifth or double or triple, right? So that's where every client's different. No client will be the same as any other client because every store is unique. Right, every client is selling different products. They have a different logo. It's not cookie cutter. It's handcrafted, custom. Everybody's different. So therefore, everybody's results are going to be different. And I like to use a personal trainer as an example where if you get a personal trainer, you start eating healthy. Your expectation is that you're going to lose weight. How much? Who knows? (laughs) Everybody's different. Because if you have a personal trainer that says, I guarantee that you're going to lose 25 pounds in the next 92 days. And it's like, well, isn't my situation different than your other clients? Nope. You're guaranteed to lose that weight. That's what I'm sure many of you see out there. They're like, hmm, well, this company guaranteed I'm going to make this in this short amount of time. And it's like, it sounds maybe too good to be true. Right, that's why I'm like, the goal is to, in that situation, lose weight. And again, if you work out, if you diet, you're probably gonna lose weight. I mean, you're doing the right things. Just like in business, if we're marketing, we have products with time, you know, gonna make money. How much, who knows? I think that's why we have a long program. It's not a little 90 day thing. It's not a hundred day it's thing. One year, right? It's at least one year. Okay. At least one year and I so also- expectation is you're working with Alex for one whole year. Minimum, but I also work with clients after that after that because I have a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee where it's a trust thing. I don't want clients to abuse it, but they don't. Where I'm like, hey, if you really feel like we're getting good results, but you want to continue on after that, I'll give clients free extensions after 12 months. If they're like, oh, we're getting some results, but I feel it was a little slow or whatever their you know issue is, I want them to be like you're saying, ecstatic with the program. Mm-hmm. So I'll extend clients for 15 months, for 18 months, because maybe that extra time frame helps them go from kind of getting sales inconsistently to then scaling just that three to six months. And so uh, it's this is a long-term thing. It's not a, oh, 90 day program and then upsell, upsell, upsell. It's like, hey, we're in this for the long haul because I'm being transparent in that it takes time to do anything worthwhile. So one one time investment up front. Mm-hmm. And let's say things are going well after 12 months, mm-hmm. maybe you work with them an initial month or two, are they able to reinvest with you again? So it's not really a reinvest of the full amount. It's more, hey, if you want us to manage the store, we can do that for a small fee of $150 a month. Okay. Because really what this is, it takes 10 times the amount of work to build something from scratch to build the systems, to build the marketing, to build the product selection. It takes a lot of work to build that in the first year, but to manage it 
I'm not gonna say it's easy, but it's 10x the 10x less the amount of work. Initial upfront. Right. right. So that's why I'm not gonna try to charge 15 grand a year forever. Right. Um, it's more like, hey, 15,000 to build this, 150 a month after to manage it. But in the initial program, training, one-on-one -on -one training is included. Okay. Because some clients say, hey, I have time now. I wanna manage my store forever teach me how to do it, that's included in the initial program. So it's not an upsell because I always look at everything from my perspective if I was my client. Yeah. And I say, look, I like options. Don't force me to use your company forever, even if it's going great. I want the option to get training so that at any point in time, I can manage my own store or I can keep paying you, but at least I have the training included to manage it on my own if I choose to do so. Because again, it's a $6.3 trillion market, global e-commerce. It's only gonna get bigger. So you can't have that mindset of what am I gonna make in the next three to six months? It's more like, what can I make over the next- Three to six know, years. <laughs> three, six, even 10 years because yeah. malls are going away, in-person shopping is going away. Those little strip malls with little clothing stores, they're out of business or they're going out of business. So online shopping is only gonna get bigger. So you really just have to say, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm in this long term. Let me have that mindset. And again, that goes back to the the home buyers. With that mindset, you're gonna have a 10 bedroom mansion budget with the expectation of a four bedroom two bath. Love with it. that mindset. But if you're thinking three to six months, you're on the opposite side of that spectrum. Yeah. So you, you can when my clients work with you, they have the option to say, you know what, Alex, we love you. Uh keep managing this store. I'll pay the 150. I kind of think of my current accountant that I invest with uh, every month. I have a whole team that helps me do my tax and I just pay. It's a subscription model. Mm -hmm. And the amount of money I pay is a wash in terms of what they save me. So I would look at that fee of $150. I would throw that on top of whatever the monthly subscription fee is to have the Amazon platform, mm -hmm. the Shopify right. subscription, Walmart subscription, whatever it is, and any other fees that come with managing that store i would just throw that right right in there so you know what this would what this will cost month to month and that sets a good standard as to what we should be generating each and every month mm -hmm. right that's i would say that's a goal so you did say the goal is to make money mm -hmm. would you go a step further and say ideally we want to produce a break even or positive cash flow based on the initial investment of the 15k plus whatever it costs to uh, run the store month to month or would you say the goal is to at least within the first year or afterwards is to simply just generate money from it get some results and then keep on experimenting till we see that pop mm -hmm. in, in revenue that's a good point i really want to work with clients until they at least make their money back and profit okay so that's kind of where the client satisfaction guarantee is subjective and objective where i tell clients you know i don't want you to after 12 months start making money but then you know you haven't even made your money back so that's kind of where I like to say, you're not guaranteed to make that in the first 12 months, but I want to get there. And if it takes longer, we're there for the long haul. Okay. And because we can't control the market. We can't control Amazon, the algorithm. We only have control over my team and our time, our energy and our effort. So that's why I'm saying, look, if it takes longer than 12 months, we're in it with, you know, for, with them for the long haul. Um, and that's really what we can guarantee is time, effort, and energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so with that, let's just kind of, because I still uh, don't really get it. Like, mm -hmm. how does e-commerce work? How How is it that I can just create a website or create a store, mm -hmm. throw products on there that aren't mine, that I didn't create, mm -hmm. and some random person in the world somewhere is going to find my website, click on it, and buy me the product? At a huge they... profit to you, right? Like, it sounds great. You know, yeah, I so think let's the, break down how does, how does it, it work? actually work? Yeah, yeah, right. I think the biggest thing you have to think about is credibility by association. Why would somebody work with me? A lot of the time it's because they know Denzel. Correct. They trust Denzel. You have credibility. I'm getting credibility by association. Same thing with an e-commerce store by being on Amazon. As an example, Amazon has been around for 20, 25 years. People in America have probably at least shopped there at, at least once or twice. Yeah. probably half of americans right so if your products are on amazon people seem okay if you're on amazon you must be credible so i'm going to trust your store i'm going to buy your products so i get what you're saying with a random website like denzelsite.com 
Yeah. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. But on Amazon, people trust Amazon, so they're going to trust you. Okay. So Number one. So you're saying that when you work with clients, uh, you're helping them make the the website or the the store the store mm -hmm. which has its own domain. No. So the a store is really on Amazon an assortment of products being sold on Amazon. Okay. So that's where we're gonna. It's not so really an when Amazon. I search on Amazon. Right. Amazon itself doesn't have its own store or am I not comprehending that right? So the way or it's like, basically a multitude of so many different people's stores. Exactly. So are, and, and they're just the host. Exactly. So on Amazon, people don't look for stores. No, they look for products. They look for, products. They look for office chair, okay. microphone, laptop, camera. And that's where you have to have certain products that are in demand, which we have analytics to look at products that are in demand at a competitive price with good shipping speed. And you have to understand the marketing, how to set up the SEO so that you show up higher and higher and higher in the search results. That's the okay. key with Amazon, because just like Google, if I'm a plumber, somebody looks up plumber in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, they're going to pick somebody on the first page, maybe the top of the second page. So that's where you have to understand the algorithm, which I do on Amazon, on Walmart. How do you get products up? Up, 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 up okay. in the search results so that people find them, they buy them. And All of right. course, I want to go a layer deeper, but yeah, um, you're yeah. going on Amazon. So I'm going to example. Amazon right now. This is a Rode microphone that we're using right now. So if I was right. to look up Rode mm -hmm. microphone, um, I'm going to see multiple options of the same product. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that this Rode product, if I was to search it, I'm going to see like 15 and I can just keep scrolling page after page after page mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna keep seeing the same different product I might see a slight change in pricing. You may see the product or similar variations of it similar. that Amazon want to recommend that and right So there's Amazon recommendations, right? Or products that are just similar to that. Maybe it's not that exact microphone Maybe it's a separate company that right. Amazon's algorithm knows. Hey, if people are buying this They also might be interested in this product. Yeah. Yeah so are you saying when you're working with my clients that uh, start up a store mm -hmm. with you and you build a store that your goal is, let's say this road mic and it's in demand, let's just say mm -hmm. you're trying to get their store on the first page of Amazon mm -hmm. first results where they're going to see that I'm going to see that mic, but I'm not going to know that it's Alex's store, right. Denzel's store. They're going to see the product just, that they want. Yeah, I'm just clicking. Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. People and, don't care what store they're buying from. They, they're they buying from Amazon. That's right. the way it works. So again, your Amazon store is really an assortment of products that are just being sold on Amazon. I mean, that's the beauty of Amazon is that you're getting credibility by association, um, but you're also getting traffic. But again, the key thing is with the product selection, just to go a little bit deeper, like you're looking at products right now. Yeah. We want to look at products that are unique, different, that are usually unbranded because we need to make profit. So why would somebody buy our product for 150 when we found it for 75 or even 100? Mm. There has to be a reason for that margin. And the reason is finding the right products. Like let's say an office table, people with certain products and certain niches, they don't care what the brand is. They want to care about the look. But if somebody loves the look of a dining table or an office table or a chair, they might just say, wow, I love the look of that. I'm going to buy that honey right now. Even if it's $800, we could find it for 500. That's the type of products that we sell because again, with a road mic, how can we find that and flip it for a profit? Like there has to be a reason for us making a margin. So that's where the product selection and research comes in and that plays a huge factor. So when I'm on Amazon, I'll see like two products on the, on the first page that are, it'll say sponsored. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And then one will say best seller. Mm -hmm. Then I scroll a little bit and I see the third product that I search for the road uh, NT USB mini is what this is called. Mm -hmm. so I search for it. I can see it right here. 99 bucks free delivery by May 12th. Today's the ninth. Mm -hmm. Only eight left in stock order soon. So if I click on that, I'm assuming that's someone's store. Mm -hmm. Like probably road, probably their own store. Ah, okay. So, so road has a store, right? These mm -hmm. big Big box. Right. Canon for cameras has a Canon store. Gotcha. So that's why we're looking for products that you don't want to compete with that. No, because what why would somebody find? buy ours for 125 even let's say when they can find it on Amazon for 100. So it's, we have to find products from suppliers that are different, that are unique, that we can find margin. 
where you need to find something for a dollar, let's say, and sell it for 150, or find something for a thousand dollars, sell it for 1500. That's what you're looking for. Exactly. Products that you can get for uh, wholesale. Usually unbranded products. Unbranded products. Right. Unbranded products that you can't find at Walmart, right? We're not trying to sell toilet paper. We don't want to sell toothpaste. Why would somebody buy our Colgate toothpaste for 40% more when they can find it on probably Colgate website or um, Walmart? So the key is finding unbranded products okay. that are different, that also are from suppliers that don't do marketing. So we're doing mm. the marketing with the SEO and advertising as well on Amazon, on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, depending on um, the client and the package, but you wanna mix in SEO and advertising. Okay, so yeah. part of that investment of the 15K covers the establishment of the store itself, mm -hmm. the marketing plan for a, a year? Yes. A year? Mm -hmm. The advertising, sales, SEO, description, mm -hmm. title. Supplier setup. Thumbnail. Yeah. Photos, supplier setup, automation, software, automation, software, mm -hmm. as well as teaching you to become self-sufficient after a year where you can then manage the store yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's unique because a lot of companies out there, they try to upsell, upsell, upsell forever. And you're like, okay, I started at a $15,000 investment. Now I'm at 50 mm -hmm. through this extra coaching or this extension or this and that. Um, so that's why I like to say, hey, you know what you're getting into. There's no surprises. There's no additional expenses, depending of course on the package. But you know, with clients that we work with now, they wanna know what they're getting into, how much it costs, and that's it. At that point, once they make their decision, at least they know what they're getting into. Um, and that's, I think, the biggest peace of mind that once I put the money in, expenses are included, there's nothing else additional, um, which a lot of people are kind of scared of with the business. They're like, okay, 15, but then what is it really gonna be, right, after a year? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I like to include everything just to make it easy. So after a year, what would you say is the average cost to keep the store going? Is there um, a range there? Or? I'd say under 250 a month. Under 250 a month. Yeah. Okay. That so that's where clients ask, oh, well, what if I want to shut down my store? And I'm like, well, why would you shut it down? You know, if you make one or two sales once in a while, that's going to pay for your expenses and profit. And again, that's that's like saying, oh, you know, why would I keep a stock long term? I made some money this first year. Let me sell it. It's like, no, you're going to make money compounding off of having a store now over the next 10 plus years. Because again, this market has tailwinds pushing it. It's not going to get any smaller. So you don't want to have the mindset of, oh, mm, 250 a month. I have to maintain that. It's like you put, you paid the money for the store to be set up. The store grew. Now you're managing it yourself. Let's say, let it ride. Even if you have a slow month, a slow week, whatever it is, it's a long-term game. Got it. Just like you and I, I mean, this took me five or six years. You, Your success took you the first few years. And so uh, you don't want to have the mindset of what am I going to make in the next 12 months? It's more, okay, I want to work with Alex, get my money back, however long that takes, yeah. make some profit. And then now the growth path starts. People expect the growth path in the first six months. Yeah. So that goes back to the budget thing with the house. I awesome. keep referencing that because it's such an easy yeah. analogy, but um, you, it's, it's like you're saying, all those YouTubers out there, all those Instagrammers, I'm gonna guarantee my clients make X, Y, and Z yeah. in the next month. And it's like, how can you possibly do that? Right. <laughs> then they watch that and they expect the same so thing. With, with any of your clients over the last year or two now, mm -hmm. right, probably longer, have you ever experienced anyone just kind of like taking off in the first oh, of course. couple months and what what kind of numbers did that look like do you have any case studies you remember off the top of your head or of course i've had clients do with their stores six figures in the first year multiple six figures i mean seven figure clients after the first few years um but again that's why i don't like to say those aren't typical those aren't oh you should expect that you should wake up and expect those numbers it's more like hey there's anomalies with every business okay that's why i like to say with time though the range starts to, I would say, narrow in terms of the outliers. Outliers are usually in the first 12 months, what a client does. Mm -hmm. That's where if you're looking over a long period of time, time can eat away at that and make outliers seem normal. Got it. So of course, like I'm saying there's seven figure clients, multiple six figures, but I'm not saying that, oh, look at this guy. He made this, so you should expect to make that mm -hmm. easy. It's more like, hey, everybody has case studies, everybody has success stories, but um, you can't say that that's just typical. And have you had anyone in the past say quit, you know, like back out or, um, or I guess any, any, um, 
quote unquote failures, people that went the full year but didn't make the money? Was it a, could you identify any key things that were, were missing that mm. maybe it was on the client not doing a particular thing in time? Because there's also that element of communication, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Like when someone signs up and they pay the 15K, but they don't actually jump on a call with you till three months later. Right. But then they're like, oh, I thought I was going to make this money in three months. And it's like, <laughs> well, we didn't actually start till three months later. Exactly. Like if it, there's been clients that they should have launched their Amazon account because we can't set up an Amazon store without an Amazon account until nine months into the program. And, and I'm like texting them, emailing, calling. Ah, so there is an element right. when they have to do certain things that you can't do. And that's like the only thing. That's they, like the only I thing. can't set up their Amazon seller account as an example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but if they don't do that, what am I supposed to do? It'd be like me, again, giving you a personal training game plan, but I can't do the workouts. And again, I'm not asking a lot for, for my clients. It's just that one little piece. Because you are example. saying it's a, it's a hands-off, right? Yeah. It's a hands-off opportunity, but there are like a couple things that it's just, you do need to be hands-in just a little bit. Inaccessible communication. An accessible communication. Yeah. Um, but I would say... Also with advertising, some clients don't opt for the advertising included, so they pay less, saying, oh, I'm gonna have the advertising money later, which is- But then never. They, they're like, oh, my car broke down, or my a window in my house broke. I mean, I've heard stories and I'm like, I have a Ferrari ready to go, but I don't have any gas. I have no oil. Mm. Like, what can you really expect when you said you're gonna have the advertising dollars and you didn't? But again, that's why now I'm like, mm, if you don't have the advertising dollars now, let's wait until you do, gotcha. and so then let me know. So I have had, I think, one or two people, mm -hmm. um, not sure if they're watching now, but they will talk about the, their initial wanting to invest with you, mm -hmm. right? But then you kind of say, you know, it's kind of closed right now or don't accept. And that's because of a few things that they either said in that initial call mm -hmm. that you just genuinely said no. So there is that element where you are sort of not opening, yeah, disqualifying, yeah. not opening your door to certain people mm -hmm. because of you don't want to, you don't want to hear that story mm -hmm. of, Hey, my car broke down. Well, you shouldn't have made a $15,000 investment mm -hmm. when you have a car that's on its last 10,000 miles mm -hmm. and you don't have any other savings. Right. You know, so that would be an irresponsible. We didn't run the numbers type thing. We just kind of got sold into the potential of making a ton of money. If I, if I throw in this 15 and flip it to 30, then I can buy a new car. Right. In the next three months. In the next three months. And it's like, oh, I didn't have that conversation. You know, and I don't know the, right. the specific examples, but I think the, again, the expectations versus what it takes to grow a business. Some people, that's where I like to have the initial calls with people myself yeah. and feel them out because I've had people that are like, oh, I'll give you 30,000 right now for two stores. And I'm like, mm, no. And then maybe they get mad and they talk to Denzel or maybe some yeah, other yeah, people yeah. that Some people do reach, hey man, your buddy Alex, he's not available. <laughs> he, he, he's maxed out or I don't know, maybe he's, he can't handle too many clients. Right. And I'm like, well, maybe. Mm -hmm. you guys just weren't a good fit you know I, I which say, happens like, it's a relationship happens. but it's a long-term has to be relationship yeah and maybe from day one from date one you know oh this is not a good fit mm -hmm. um, but usually it's the client that doesn't want to pay it's not usually the service provider in most businesses saying no thank you mm -hmm. because i've just seen i'm like it's not worth it to take on a client who from day one has i would say wrong expectations or right. unrealistic expectations or I mean, maybe over communication or over analysis and desperation, it's not gonna work out. If they have yeah. those things going on, no matter who I am. Yeah. But if a client's patient, you know, respectful, it's this isn't their last dollar, like they put money into it and they wanna get a return, but they're not expecting it to happen overnight. That's setting us up for success. Um, so that's where I still, I turn people down every week. And it's not, I wouldn't say it's their fault, it's just I know what that's gonna lead to and it's not worth the time and money. Right. Yeah. You're also saving them mm -hmm. uh, a heartbreak, you know, or right. saving them critical dollars that they could have probably invested with me first in some financial coaching mm -hmm. or simply watch more of my videos without even paying me any money and just do more of the pregame work that I'm saying to do to get yourself in a position where you can have money saved, 
good credit, good capital available, good savings, good emergency funds, good income, good cash flow coming in where, where you can afford the hit of a $15,000 investment plus any other cost that comes with it down the line. And wait and be patient. And wait and be patient. Exactly. You know, so mm -hmm. that's important. So I think, I, I really think we've been hitting on this because I, I'm very, very concerned when people in my particular community, I'm just talking to my clients now, that you guys make investments when you told me you wanted to pay off debt first. And then you see Alex's emails or you see any one of my promotional emails where I'm promoting income opportunities. Just take it like I'm, I'm just not talking to you at the moment, mm. especially if you're in the pregame work, you're in low cash flow position, low income, and you're working with me one to one. And I gave you clear steps. Mm. And then you see these three sexy emails that I send <laughs> out on how to become your next, you know, 10 X your income and build the dreams that you want. Mm -hmm. Have to understand I'm, I'm talking to different people at the same time. So I think it's important. Let's, let's stick to whatever our original plan was. Let's actually see it through. Mm -hmm. Timing uh, matters. Timing does matter, mm -hmm. you know, and understand that I have clients that are making seven figures. I have clients that are doing multiple six figures. I have clients that are making their first six figure year, hundred K, mm -hmm. 110 K. And I have clients making 30, 40 K a year, mm -hmm. maybe even less than that. So I can't have the same conversation with a seven figure than the person I'm talking to is making 30 K a year, mm -hmm. right? The person that's making seven figures doesn't have to blink with a $15,000 investment with you. They'll probably do two, three, four stores. Right. Person that's making 30, 40, 50 K watching this video probably isn't the right time for you to invest with Alex. Maybe it's just jump on a one hour phone call with me mm -hmm. and let's build that plan where I can reveal some opportunities. Okay, when's the last time you got a promotion at your job or what skills do you already have in place? Can we go for that promotion, increase our income? Let's get rid of these three debts. Let's build our capital up. Let's build our savings up. And then maybe nine months from now, one year from now, right. then we jump over to Alex. And by then the relationship even even better your mindset's ready for mm -hmm. that type of a move exactly right so i've had a good amount of scenarios and i think it's the fear of missing out for sure mm -hmm. there's the fomo where i have clients that i initially work with them for six months nine months 12 months even even a year two years and the plan was a four-year plan to get out of debt but they became impatient mm -hmm. with paying off debt and they're like now I want to invest, yeah. but we're still in debt. So we're not in the best financial position. They definitely did better. They're, they're in a better position, but then they make that investment and then they make three other investments. Mm -hmm. They invest with you. They invest with Pace Morby. They invest with Grant Cardone. They invest with Tony in a, in a mastermind. They then buy a, a $5,000 course over here and a mm -hmm. $25,000 disruptor course over here. And now they got 15 courses, a bunch of things going on. Yeah. Their and now we're is in off the, the game plan. Yeah, now we're in the same amount of debt than when I started with them two years ago. And then they come back to me, hit me up, and now I'm supposed to do magic. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. So my my encouragement to everyone watching where I'm, I'm sitting with Alex right here, we're kind of unpacking this specific opportunity, but also recognizing that you have a life, you've got kids, the wife, the husband, you know, mom-in-law, dad-in-law, you've got the career, wife's got a career, there's a baby on the way, all these different elements. Let's let's go back to the basics. Let's run the numbers, mm -hmm. right? Let's jump on a call with me. You do free initial. Yeah, it's a consultation. Consultation. It's really not a sales of, call. Yeah, yeah. I really try to see like, okay, who are you? What are your goals? I always ask, how, what's your expectation with this? Like, what's your motivation for this? Um, and most clients want to do this to get more freedom, which I appreciate that. Some clients, do, they're like, oh, I want to make so much money so fast. And that's when I'm like, mm, red flag number one. <laughs> So that's why it's a consultation. I want to see, is this a good fit? Who are you? What your goals are? And then if that checks out, then let's discuss the opportunity and the program. So it really is a consultation. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. All right. So it's like maybe now you could jump on a call with Alex mm -hmm. for that consultation. And let's say it's not a good fit because of what Alex may feel or what you may feel. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's a good, that's actually a good thing. Yeah. Because then it lets you know, okay, maybe I need to save a little more money first. Maybe I need to change my mindset first. Maybe I need to watch a couple more videos of, of us and mm -hmm. dive into a session like this. Yeah. 
maybe come back work with me or one of my other partners first and we kind of build up to a big type of investment. Not everyone can afford 15 grand just to drop it. Mm -hmm. I mean, even even I need to think before I drop 15 grand. Exactly. Right. So that's important. Mm -hmm. um, anything else you want to share as we you know close out here? I feel like we really dove in a lot of different areas. It's been fun. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed this. Uh, any closing? Uh, remarks anything you want to share regarding the the business what you've got planned mm -hmm. is this something that you're like okay th this is my thing like you're not changing because prior mm -hmm. to this you were helping people with Facebook ads right marketing right? marketing mm -hmm. and then you were doing you were helping people start YouTube channels mm -hmm. right and uh, a combination of that yeah I think it's, it's always more. been kind of a it's like it's been cheesecake factory Okay. For the past six years, I've done a little bit of this, yeah, a little bit of that. It's been a whole a la carte menu. Now it's more five guys. You, know, you come here to get a burger. Yeah. Before it was more, oh, you need help with YouTube channel. You need help with ads. You need help with a website. It's just doing whatever it takes. I think now I'm, I've been able to find my niche and say, this is what we're really best at, not just good at. Okay. And so I think that's been the if biggest If somebody shift. asks, mm -hmm. right, like I remember I have a client, Christy, yeah. Right. Oh, and yeah. I helped her start a YouTube channel, and mm -hmm. I think she also has a store. Yeah. As well. So if I have like a good client like that, ask. Mm -hmm. Are you kind of more transparent and will allow to dip into your other skills and help that person? Absolutely. Or is it like they they need to invest with you in a store first? Mm -hmm. Like that would be your starter. Okay. Primary, you know, it's the entree, and then like, oh, you want to do YouTube? I do what Denzel does. That's dessert. <laughs> Yeah, it's like an add-on, but that's not. No, they could do, if they want to talk to me about a YouTube channel, if they have a business that they want to advertise, I work with people like that still, but I'm just saying like you're saying. It's less. It's a much smaller percentage. Before it was more 20% do this, 30% do that. Now it's like 95% e-commerce, 5% you, Stephen Gardner, Chris Steam, YouTube, like Amanda Pride, she's a new client, yeah. YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's where it's not really you have to get a store. It's just that's what I'm really promoting because that's what I feel we do best, my team and I, but still some people want my coaching for their coaching business or right. their online course. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm open-minded. It just depends on the person and the fit. Yeah. Yeah. And if I can really help them, okay. that's the biggest thing. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. This has been great, guys. Mm -hmm. Again, Denzel Rodriguez, Alex Albaran here. If you have any questions at all, you can reach him mm -hmm. for an initial consultation. If you've never had a conversation with him before, you just want to get a little even deeper understanding of where he's currently at today and what he's currently working on and how you fit into the opportunity that he's presenting. Or if you have any questions for me directly, I have Finance Geek Ministry that you can sign up for. That's the first link below every YouTube video I have. That's the first thing I recommend. If you're brand new or if you've been watching me for a little bit but you've never had a consultation with me or Alex, I recommend joining that first. See how we operate. Mm -hmm. We actually spend time together on Zoom calls, uh, answering questions. Alex will present some case studies even and answer questions live. I think that's really helpful. And from there, if you wanna have a consultation with me one-to-one, -one, you can absolutely do that. That's like two links right below. On my website, denzelrajuice.com forward slash resources, you'll see his link mm -hmm. uh, where you can sign up and just get on the email newsletter, newsletter by signing up for Finance Geek Ministry, which is free, right? You're getting access to my free course, free private community where we gather two times a month on the first and last Friday of every month, 8 p.m. Eastern time via Zoom. And we just communicate, right? It's, we're not trying to sell things right away. We're mm -hmm. trying to have a conversation, provide value first, feel you out, feel us out, do your due diligence, your homework, right? Want to make sure these are really good relationships. And I think so far I've been doing a really good job. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of people that just need that reass reassurance mm -hmm. and then they're good clients again. I remember, I, I think it was um, that one lady, uh, uh, her name escapes me right now. What does it start with? I think, I see. I think so. It's an older lady, really mm -hmm. nice, sweet lady. We've been working with her. I've been working with her for years. Um, just done well and I think she just needed some reassurance which I think you provided mm -hmm. um, letting her know that she hadn't spent no she hadn't spent any money on marketing mm -hmm. you know um, so I think that's the case where there's some clients that bought your program but without the marketing yeah and maybe those ones are not maybe doing the best versus <laughs> the ones that 
bought the whole thing where now you require it the full thing right and i think maybe it's just again their expectation was oh i put money into this i thought it was just going to be hands off and it's like yeah but again to the ferrari analogy we need the fuel we need the yeah. gas we need the oil so in order to have fluid. a successful e-commerce store if you don't have a personal brand exactly that you're already generating organic traffic, traffic. Mm -hmm. then you need to pay for that traffic you need to pay to drive people to that platform exactly. whether it's and, amazon Walmart, and if you and don't how are they going to find you? They, they won't. Right. And they can with SEO, but in terms of fast growth, again, that's kind of where if you want to grow slowly, don't spend money on ads. You can still grow, but it's more, you know, progression. But if you want to grow now, you got to spend. Yeah. That's kind of where it's like sometimes people want the five, you know, course meal, but they want to spend McDonald's money. Yeah. And that's where from day one, I'm like, mm, maybe this isn't yeah. the best fit. You yeah. Know? At, on the flip side, though, some people expect, you know, outback results. But they have the five course, you know, state nine five four budget, and they're like, okay, we're we're gonna make this happen, you know. Awesome. Well, pleasure, man. Absolutely. And, Thanks uh, for having me. God bless everyone. We'll we'll do this again very soon, mm -hmm. and just provide another update, maybe a couple months from now. See how maybe once a quarter. Yeah, yeah once that'd a be quarter, good. See how things are going on, and just maybe even do a live stream probably next time. It'd yeah. be a little more interesting mm -hmm. to uh, get get real clients and feedback, insight, what's going on, that type of thing, mm -hmm. and go from there. God bless everyone. Have a wonderful day and we'll be talking soon.